So in this video, we're going to look at the gas turbine process calculation, a little bit introduction to that. We're only going to cover a simple cycle gas turbine that is by far the most common type of gas turbine that there is. And you can look at the lecture slides for the different kinds of uh, more advanced, more complicated configurations. But the simple cycle gas turbine that we're going to cover here, that is not only the simple and basic one, but is also by far the most common type of gas turbine that is being currently used in the industry. So if we look at the process, this is what a simple cycle open gas turbine looks like. We have the compressor sucking in the air, compresses to a higher pressure, temperature increases significantly at the process. We send it to the combustion chamber where we inject fuel, we have combustion, we have very high temperature coming out. We expand in the turbine and turbine produces power to the shaft most of it is, or well, typically roughly half, but rather more than less, is getting used to turn the compressor itself, and the remainder is sent out as net power production, or net mechanical power production. So only after certain losses we get the net electrical power out. So we need to be able to calculate a couple of balances for these components. Luckily, we have a lot simpler process than the steam power plant, so there's only three basic components. The power consumption of the compressor, as with any component where we have just one flow going through in stationary state, steady state. The power consumption is mass flow rate times the enthalpy change. So H2 is going to be higher in the compressor because it consumes power. Turbine, same idea, but now the H3 is the higher because we are producing. So mass flow rate times enthalpy difference, we get the th turbine thermal power. Combustion chamber, only a tiny bit more complicated. So basically the heat rate into the combustion chamber is mass flow rate of fuel times all kinds of energy that the fuel brings with it. Basically what we might consider here is the lower heating value and the sensible enthalpy, but of course the temperature of the fuel and the sensible enthalpy it has because of that temperature is much, much less than the lower heating value that it brings with itself so that you can release it in combustion. So we can say with a negligible loss of accuracy, basically that the, the heat rate with the fuel is mass flow rate of the fuel times the lower heating value. And this also has to be the mass flow rate times specific enthalpy of the flue gas out minus what is brought in. So mass flow rate of air times enthalpy of air in. So just out of, out of the energy balance, this has to be true. What, comes, what goes in has to equal what goes out. And then we have the net thermal power or the shaft power of the gas turbine and that is going to be the thermal power of the turbine what the gas leaves to the turbine rotor uh, sorry this one here minus the consumption of the compressor so roughly half rather more than less than half of the turbine power is used to run its own compressor now the next question is where do we get this uh, specific enthalpies? In the steam power plant we picked up water vapor HS diagram and looked up where the temperature and pressure lines cross and then we read the enthalpy. Not so here we get away a lot simpler method because we can always assume that we can use the ideal gas approximation. That means that enthalpy is a function of temperature and temperature alone. So we don't need the pressure, we just know the temperature and if we know the specific heat then the difference of our temperature to the reference temperature is going to be our enthalpy. So if we know the CP and we know the reference temperature we can calculate the H or if we are, don't know the reference temperature well if we know if we are given a constant value of Cp, we can just pick a reference temperature. Because as we remember, 
enthalpy doesn't have any uh, specific absolute value where it has to be zero. So this means two things. One, we can just pick for the purpose of our calculation a convenient one, probably zero in what zero Celsius or zero Kelvin, depending on which ones you're using, is probably the most convenient. Just make sure that in every single component you use the same one in one set of calculations. Or if we are picking the values from a table or a chart, we don't need to do that, but sometimes we might do that. Then we have to make sure that we only pick the values from that same chart because different charts, different tables, they can have different values of reference temperature. And that means that the values of age picked from those is not going to be comparable. They cannot be used in the same set of calculations or we make a mistake. Okay. So gas turbine performance indicators, these are very similar to the performance indicators that we had with the steam cycle power plant. With some notable differences, generally speaking, these ones are a little bit easier because our, our process, our uh, prime mover is a whole lot simpler, so less things to care about. So first of all, net electric power, we start by calculating the net thermal power, that's the difference between the, uh, when we deduct from turbine thermal power, that what is consumed by the compressor. And then that net thermal power we multiply first with the turbo generator electromechanical efficiency. Then we have the gearbox efficiency because very often our shaft is turning a whole lot faster than the 3000 RPM that our generator wants. And finally, we have the transformer efficiency. So compared to the steam power plant, there's a couple of efficiencies missing here. There's no boiler efficiency. That's obviously because we have no boiler. Uh, in the boiler, we would, uh, uh, in steam power plants, we would burn the fuel with air to get flue gas, and then we transfer with some losses the heat from the hot flue gas into the water that is the uh, work fluid. Here, our work fluid is the air and the flue gas itself, so obviously no efficiency losses there. Technically, we could theoretically have some kind of unburnt losses, but basically we are burning with a lot of excess air, very easily combustible liquid and uh, gaseous fuels. So basically 100% combustion, no losses. No piping losses, of course. Also no auxiliary power consumption worth mentioning. So basically we don't have the auxiliary efficiency here. And this is because uh, if you think about what are those auxiliary power consumers in a steam power plant? Well, we have a big consumptions for fuel and ash handling, for condenser cooling water pumps, and uh, for the combustion air, primary and secondary air fans and the flue gas fans. None of those exist here, only things basically some minor consumptions by automation, lighting, HVAC, uh, maybe some lights at the parking lot basically, and that's it. So totally negligible consumptions compared to the amount of power being produced. So we simply don't, don't consider that at all. That would be so close to 100%. Thermal efficiency, we have the net thermal power divided by the thermal heat input. And just as we just said, we don't have a boiler. We basically have 100% combustion of the fuel in the workflow itself. So we can say that in case of a gas turbine, our thermal power in equals the heat rate with the fuel. So lower heating value times mass flow rate of the fuel. And thermal net power is what we had here difference uh, when we deduct from turbine production, we deduct from that the compressor consumption. What remains is our net thermal hour uh, output. And in comparison, to the steam power plant, again, this thermal efficiency is going to be very, very close to what we get from net electrical power. So these are very high efficiencies. We have almost, almost the same electrical efficiency and thermal efficiency. So basically, these are fairly comparable figures, again, in the steam power plant because of all the boiler losses, auxiliar, auxiliaries and such. There, the same cannot be said. So, steam power plant uh, electrical efficiency is uh, 
notably lower than thermal efficiency. In gas turbines, they are almost the same. Then, just like with all other processes, the inverse of the uh, efficiency is the specific fuel consumption. So just the inverse of electrical, we put the, how much fuel we need per power generation. So in Finland, also in Sweden, they use the, often the same, same uh, kind of notation. This would be dimensionless, just like the efficiency would be if you go to British or United States, uh, then you would like, likely see the specific fuel consumption announced in something like kilowatt hours or kilograms of fuel per kilowatt hours of energy, or maybe the fuel would be in British thermal units or something, but uh, rarely dimensionless. In Finland, we usually talk about dimensionless figures. And just as a summary, the major differences to the steam power plant process are that we get almost complete consumption uh, combustion of the fuel and the flue gas itself is the work fluid. So no boiler, no boiler piping efficiencies, negligible auxiliaries. So basically auxiliary efficiency would be about 100%. And that's why our thermal efficiency is only very slightly less than uh, more than our electrical efficiency. We get the electrical efficiency when we multiply this here with these three fairly high efficiencies.